Roadfly.com, the internet's best resource for buyers, sellers, and owners like you. Hi, I'm Ross Rappaport with Roadfly.com. Thanks for watching this episode of Roadfly TV, one I've been looking forward to for a very long time. This is the BMW M3, a car that needs little introduction to my audience and one that's inspired lust and envy in just about every car enthusiast out there. For those who don't know, I'll try and give you a quick rundown. The M3 is a wildly enhanced version of BMW's bread and butter 3 Series, and instead of that car's usual array of silky smooth inline sixes, this car sports a 4 liter V8 revving to 8300 RPM and producing 414 horsepower. It's also got an automated dual clutch manual gearbox in place of the normal 3 Series conventional automatic and a real live mechanical limited slip differential, as well as a host of other performance focused unique features. The most noticeable one and the most indicative of this car's true intentions is this roof panel made of unpainted carbon fiber. It's a nod to limited production M3 CSLs of the past and a great way to save weight and lower the car's center of gravity. It is possible to get an M3 with a sunroof at no additional charge, but I wouldn't recommend it as you would lose the carbon fiber and compromise your structural rigidity by cutting a big hole in the top of your roof, not to mention the additional weight required for the sunroof's mechanism. As it should be, the interior of our test car is all business, although I'm happy to report that, unlike most BMWs, the M3 actually comes standard with some amount of leather on the seats. There's also standard power adjustment as well. Now, you can get extended leather seating surfaces and some leather throughout the cabin for at least an extra thousand dollars, if not more. But in my book, that's not worth it because there are a lot more must-have options here, including the technology package, which for 2,500 bucks includes a navigation system, the M-Drive system, and keyless entry. This car also has the competition package, which includes adjustable dampers that can be controlled either through these little buttons here or in more detailed fashion through the car's nav system, along with settings for throttle response, shift response, and power delivery. That, in my opinion, makes the tech package, despite its hefty price tag, a little bit more of a must-have on a car like this. I'm going through the list of options with a very critical eye because I honestly believe I'm a potential buyer for this car, but I'm still on a budget, so I'd be looking to keep the total purchase price as low as possible because I really would stretch my budget to the max or even make a poor financial decision to buy this car, and I'm about to show you why. It isn't just that this car makes 414 horsepower, or that it gets to 60 miles an hour in the low 4 second range, or onto the quarter mile in the low 12 second range. It's the way that it delivers that power. You guys know that I'm a sucker for high revs. Just listen to this thing go. 8300 RPM. Unbelievable. Okay, I forgot what I was going to say. So now that my cameraman's told me to slow down and I'm thinking in a more rational, straightforward way, allow me to finish my thought, which is that you probably saw not just how fast the car revved, but how quickly it shifted and how it was right back in the meat of the power band as soon as I did so. And that's the seven speed dual clutch automatic doing its thing. <sighs> the transmission ratios, they're so close together to take advantage of the car's unique, somewhat peaky power band. And while that's great for power, it's not so great for fuel economy. For example, if you're doing 50 miles an hour in top gear, you'll be turning 2,000 RPM already. And while that gives you a lot of punch at any RPM, and any engine, any uh, vehicle speed rather, it really hits you at the pump. The window sticker for this car says 14 miles per gallon in the city and 20 on the highway and you'll also get hit with the gas guzzler tax. Now, one complaint I hear a lot about this car is its perceived lack of low-end torque. And I'll admit that 295 pound-feet is a little less imposing than its 414 horsepower. But it just revs so quickly that I feel like anyone complaining about this car's torque has never experienced this. Do I look like I'm complaining about torque? So, like most driving enthusiasts, I prefer a traditional manual as opposed to these automated manuals, but I really can't fault how BMW has put this one together. 
you pull back on the lever for uh, upshifts and you push on it for downshifts. That's great if you've ever been on a track because you know if you try and haul yourself down from 140 miles an hour, being able to push on the lever and brace yourself against it is a lot better. It reduces fatigue, you can get through the corner quicker and get on the gas sooner. Now, I don't think that I would opt for this transmission personally myself because it adds $2,900 to the base price of the car. And that really doesn't do a lot for my budget. I'd probably skip it and put that money towards all the gas I'm gonna be burning. So this car sounds so good that I think the worst thing I could do is add my dumb voice over it. So I'm gonna give you a, about 10 seconds of uninterrupted mechanical symphony. After five years at Roadfly, there aren't too many cars that really get my blood pumping, but this one did. Now, it starts at around $58,000, and that's a pretty big chunk of change, and I'm not a fan of people blowing their entire budget on cars. But if you've got to do it, this is the one to do it on. There are other cars in its class, like the Lexus ISF or Mercedes-Benz C63 AMG, that will deliver similar performance depending on the context. There's also a $35,000 Mustang GT that will do it too. But nothing will offer you the same sublime balance of road and track usability. And just the exhilaration of the power delivery, the razor sharp brakes, handling and steering, it's all just so intoxicating. I really want one. And as a result, I, I thought a little harder about what it would take to actually afford one of these. If you're anything like me and you prefer four doors, the M3 is also offered in sedan form, and that's actually three or four grand cheaper. So that gets me just a little bit closer to making a really poor financial decision. I'm Ross Rappaport. Thanks for watching this episode of Roadfly TV. Please join our community by subscribing to our YouTube channel and leave me some comments. I would love to hear from you. Roadfly.com, the internet's best resource for buyers, sellers, and owners like you.